The thing I loved most about video games growing up was their ability to whisk me away from my own often dull, sometimes bleak and nearly always confusing reality and transport me to another seemingly better one. Maybe that's what drew me to pick up Power Quest when it released for the Game Boy Color in 1998. Developed by Sunsoft, Power Quest was most notable at the time for being a tournament fighting game with an RPG-like story mode. The story takes place in a small generic town, where the latest craze of one-on-one -on -one radio controlled robot battles has gripped the populace. Our protagonist is a young adolescent boy who has just scored a voucher to claim his first RC robot. He and his best friend Louis then set out for a summer of mini mech filled mayhem as the National Modelers Tournament looms. As luck would have it, almost everyone else in the town also wants nothing more than to exchange a brief quip and then to throw down with their tiny toy combatants. It doesn't matter whether they're small children, factory workers or the local hoodlums. Everyone here settles their disputes through their bots. As a weedy kid in 1998, this seemed like an attractive system. Certainly much better than the what you looking at, accompanied by an aggressive shove that I was used to. Mind you, I suspect that if I'd have suggested to the local bullies in my town that we settle our differences through the medium of robot wars, I'd probably be sitting here with a few less teeth. Our unnamed hero starts his journey at the local model shop where he must choose between five different fighters. Max, Speed, Lon, Gong and Axe. Each fighter has their own unique moveset and attributes. Max focuses on powerful punching combinations, Speed uses acrobatic kicking techniques, Lon utilizes fast kung fu moves, Gong uses powerful wrestling and Axe specializes in tricky ranged attacks. As with most things, it's probably just best to go with whichever one you think looks coolest. In my case, that was Speed. Now, with remote control in hand, it was time to hit the town, and what with being a complete novice, it only seemed sensible to start our journey to the top by destroying the hopes and dreams of some six-year-old children in the local playground. Probably due to their undeveloped hand-eye coordination, the small children don't put up much of a fight, and within no time I was able to pull off moves and string together combinations with my new machine. Each character's moves are easily figured out if you've ever played a Street Fighter game, before long, you'll have the all too familiar but strangely satisfying thumb blister you inevitably get when having to repeatedly sweep across a D-pad. The A and B buttons are assigned to quick and strong attacks respectively, but otherwise perform the same actions. Combined with the character moves, the controls feel surprisingly competent and rewarding for a two-button fighting game. Moves can be strung together to perform combinations of two hits, three hits, four hits, and even shit! Sorry, five hits. The ability to perform Street Fighter Alpha style special moves also becomes available later on, which further ups the ante. Blocking is a key aspect of the game, especially when fighting tougher opponents, and this is done by holding back, i.e. away from the opponent. Low attacks will need to be blocked whilst crouching, and jumping attacks while standing. A successfully blocked attack can be followed up with a counter attack, which is a move specific to each character. Counter attacks use up some of your special bar, which can be seen just below your health bar, and the special bar is filled slightly whenever you successfully pull off a move. The special moves you obtain later on in the game also use this bar as you'd imagine. Sadly, at the start of Power Quest Story Mode, you're a long way away from special moves. Your newly acquired robot is currently in its most basic form with only stock parts. If you venture outside of the playground to some of the other locations on the map, you'll soon discover how little damage your machine puts out compared to the opposition in those areas. Handily, the model shop in town has upgrades for sale which can increase the damage output on your bot's moves. Hooray! But they certainly don't come cheap. Each fight won in the playground will net you a mere 20 credits. And to put that in perspective, each level 1 part available in the shop costs either 1000 or 1500 credits. Upgrades to increase your general attack power or health bar will set you back a whopping 40,000 credits each. Uh, no wonder he let you have the robot for free. As a small mercy, you start the game with a thousand credits enabling you to buy a single level 1 part, but even so, the road to the top is going to require a lot of grinding for cash. The other locations in town prove a little more lucrative, with wins at the school giving you 50 credits, 100 credits at the museum, 200 credits at the factory. With each of these locations comes a noticeable step in difficulty though. Not only are the robots themselves stronger, but the AI is markedly better too. At the start of the game it seems smart to stick to the playground, and it's after grinding here for a while that we have our first encounter with the antagonist of the adventure, the Black Hyena Gang. The Black Hyena Gang's boss is hell bent on winning the upcoming tournament, and with the help of his right hand man the scientist, he'll use whatever means necessary to come out on top. After battling a few of his goons you'll come face to face with the boss himself. Unfortunately for you, the dastardly gang have a naughty trick up their sleeve in the form of a strange device, which interferes with your controls by reversing them. 
Damn you scientist! Thankfully a quick trip to the model shop and a new lick of radio wave repellent paint is all you'll need to get back on even footing. Even so, the boss is no pushover, and with his grapple happy gong model, it's dangerous to get too close. But with some careful play, dexterous agility and a bit of persistence, the boss can be overcome, and another thousand credits is the reward for doing so. Right, time to pop to the model shop and spend some of this hard earned money. Oh good, level 2 parts are now available. Wait, how much? Ah, <sighs> well, back to the grind it is. Power Quest really isn't afraid of teaching kids the value of money. Sadly, as a cynical 30-something, I learnt the value of money long ago, and so for me it really starts to feel like the game is purposefully wasting my time. Before long, however, news of an upcoming spring tournament gives me the much-needed incentive to push on, and with a few parts now under my belt, it was time to venture out of the playground and into the schoolyard and beyond. By this point, I felt like I had developed a good strategy for attacking and defending, and found myself most often at the Japanese castle in search of higher rewards. Here the going is much tougher and chipping away at the opponent's health bar can feel painfully slow, but ultimately the extra challenge is rewarding and with 100 credits for each win it made upgrading seem slightly less of a slog. Exploring the rest of the town you might also find yourself bumping into the announcer. When taking a break from announcing he seemingly likes to show off his own prowess with a remote control and will promptly batter you with his max model. Should you by some miracle manage to beat him fairly, or like me by abusing safe states, you'll earn a thousand credits for your trouble. Also every now and then, for seemingly no reason, you'll stumble across five grand hiding in a bush, which, although welcome, can also feel like a real kick in the teeth when you just spent the last 45 minutes painstakingly taking pocket money from small children. Are you mocking me, game? Another location in town you can visit is the scientist's lab where you'll find the notorious professor working away on some tantalisingly secret project. To stop you from stealing his work, he'll challenge you to fight against his axe model, and although it's not quite announcer level of difficulty, it's certainly a gruelling battle, far beyond anything else you'd find in the other locations on the map. It's also the only battle in the game where you'll actually lose credits with each loss. Undeterred, I decided to make it my mission to defeat the scientist's axe fair and square. After all, he must be hiding something good in there. After numerous attempts, plenty of cursing and at the cost of all of my money, I finally had the strategy I needed to win. Flying kicks followed by low sweeping attacks. I would dive in, deal damage and leap to safety whilst blocking Axe's range of attacks. My victory wasn't even close. I annihilated him. I could hardly wait to see what reward awaited me for overcoming this optional boss fight. A devastating special move? A power upgrade? Nope. 10 credits. 10 measly credits. Back in the town, the blank expressionless pixelated face of my character stared back at me seemingly in disbelief. Now I know you're mocking me, game. Power Quest story mode continues on with a spring tournament where you face a new rival and a rooftop encounter with a mysterious contender from the Far East, a touching scene with your best friend Louis before finally culminating in the National Modelers Tournament. Sadly, despite these memorable moments, the need to grind at every step is ever present. Ultimately, Sunsoft did an admirable job in putting together a story mode for their handheld fighting game, and in 1998 it really was a decently enjoyable one. I fondly remember playing through it, along with a school friend in between bouts of fierce link cable battles. Sadly, the experience is probably best left in the past, as today the slow grindy pace and high level of difficulty is an exercise in frustration that will constantly test the player's patience. What remains in Power Quest though is a fantastically fast, fluid and surprisingly deep fighting game for your Game Boy or Game Boy Color. Thankfully, an arcade mode is present to get straight to the action, and despite the small roster of playable characters, it's a fun game to go back to in short bursts. With excellent visuals for the system and music worthy of a Sunsoft game, and in spite of its shortcomings in its story mode, Power Quest is still a worthy game to recommend for Game Boy collectors. At the start of this review I stated that Power Quest was most notable at the time for being a tournament fighting game with an RPG like story mode. These days I think it should be most notable for being, arguably, one of the best arcade fighting games on Game Boy. So if you like what you've heard, why not pick up a copy of Power Quest for your Game Boy or Game Boy Color? And if you've enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate a like or a comment. Feel free to subscribe for more Game Boy reviews and thanks for watching. See you next time.